Hey there, my fellow intellectuals, Dr. Kyle here with another video. And tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking into the following article. It's called The AI Scientist Towards Fully Automated Open-Ended Scientific Discovery by Sakana.ai. This was brought to my attention by my good friend Soliana, who works in the tech industry. So Soli, if you're watching, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. And I'm going to go through this page and some of the resources here. I have gone through it very briefly earlier, but not in any great detail. But this was very surprising, exciting, and maybe concerning even to me, and perhaps to a lot of other scientists, because what the AI scientist is, or is claimed to have been able to do, is that it has conducted a full-on research project from start to finish, by itself for the most part. Of course, the researchers at Sakana the AI had to get it going, but for the most part, they have claimed that it has gone through the research life cycle more or less autonomously. And they describe the summary right here. They say that the AI scientist is the first comprehensive system for fully automatic scientific discovery, enabling foundation models such as LLMs to perform research independently. And they say here that it automates the entire research lifecycle from generating novel research ideas, writing any necessary code, executing experiments to summarizing experimental results, visualizing them, and presenting its findings in a full scientific manuscript. They also mentioned that they've introduced an automated peer review process to evaluate generated papers, write feedback, and further improve results. It is capable of evaluating generated papers with near human accuracy. So. Based on all of this and what they mention here, saying that the AI scientist has conducted research in diverse subfields of machine learning research and discovering novel contributions, based on all those things, it sounds to me that this model is coming scarily close to maybe replacing real scientists like myself one day? I don't know. For those of you who may not know me, I have a PhD in physics and I work at the NASA Ames Research Center, but I am not an expert in artificial intelligence. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. This is just my kind of unfiltered reaction to all of this. I have kind of a mixed view on artificial intelligence. I use it for my own research and I find it very useful as a tool to find patterns in data and do a lot of automated labeling for models that I want to train. But I've never thought of it as possibly taking my job. And I know, of course, everyone's been talking about AI is going to take our jobs. And I always thought maybe, you know, being a scientist, that should be fairly safe. But with something like this, it does raise a few concerns, and I think we'll discuss that below. So this is the overview of the AI scientist. Um, it is a pipeline. You can see here that the LLM will plan and innovate the idea. It will do some sort of check of the research through Semantic Scholar. It will weight or score the ideas and sort of memorize what ideas are worth pursuing. Then it goes through the experiment iteration. It creates some sort of templates, it has code, runs machine learning experiments, and then plots all those things, and then can go through the process of writing the manuscript and typing it all up. So this is basically the research life cycle in a diagram here. And it has already generated some papers. Now, like I said, I'm not a professional machine learning researcher, so I can't really verify the veracity or the results of this paper, but I'm gonna take a brief look through it. So it's creating a denoising approach for low dimensional diffusion models, addressing the challenge of balancing global structure and local detail in generated samples. Propose a novel architecture incorporating two parallel branches. So it sounds like they are, or the AI scientist has come up with some novel architecture, supposedly, based on its review of the literature. 
And it says here, they demonstrate significant improvements in the sample quality with KL divergence reductions of up to 12.8% compared to the baseline model. So when I read that, that sounds like, sounds like they have identified a gap in the research. They have created some sort of new approach to doing something. And what they've done supposedly is superior to what has been done before. Again, that's my high-level overview summary as, as someone who's not uh, an AI professional. I don't really know why there are dinosaur pictures here, but pretty cool. Don't know why this says moons. I don't really know. I guess this must be these crescent moons or what's going on there. I don't know. Even if this is all maybe ridiculous in the sense that LLMs have been known to have hallucinations and say things that are false or, or confidently provide information that it thinks is true, but it's actually all just a bunch of BS. I still find it very impressive that Supposedly, the model was able to go from idea to execution to writing up the paper and coming up with these results. I mean, these plots here, I mean, these aren't the, the nicest plots. My PhD advisor would probably be really displeased with me if I tried to publish a paper with plots like this, like plots getting in the way of the curves. But the fact that it could somehow write this paper and organize it in a way is... Impressive nonetheless, and so it says here they use PyTorch 1.9 on a single NVIDIA V100, and then we have the results here, and the KL divergence reduction, and you know it looks like a fairly you know acceptable paper in my not expert opinion whatsoever. Uh, let's keep going here. This is a paper on style fusion, adaptive multi-style generation, and character level language models. Now let's take a look here. Whoa, what is that? Uh, inference time. Okay, that, I don't know. This 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 plot that kind of gives me... <laughs> it's like a flag. This is This is not a really great plot, in my opinion, here. So clearly it's not perfect, which is maybe an encouraging sign for, for me, because I, I hadn't actually seen this before. So the fact that it doesn't create maybe the the nicest of plots like this are the error bars supposed to be? are those error bars like what is that what is going on here i don't know what those things are these captions also are kind of not maybe up to par of what you'd expect of a research journal at least if they're trying to publish in like an astrophysics journal this would probably not fly also what's going on here this is like I don't know. I don't know what they did with the plotting here. The it messed up the matplotlib or something. So okay, we we have some, we we have identified some areas of improvement for the AI scientist. But again, I'm still more or less impressed with what it has been able to accomplish in this in this work. So okay, I think that's enough for looking at some of the work it's done. But I think we should talk a little bit about what. Are some of the limitations and challenges and uh, the bloopers as they call it here so they mention here that it has several shortcomings uh, but they expect all those will improve in future versions with inclusion of multimodal models uh, and the underlying foundation models so so yeah it doesn't have any vision that's probably a significant limitation in that regard and which is why maybe the table layout and maybe some of those plots are not as well as uh, well designed as they could be. This here can incorrectly implement its ideas or make unfair comparisons to baselines leading to misleading results. Okay, that's also a valid concern. Occasionally makes critical errors when writing and evaluating results. For example, it struggles to compare the magnitude of two numbers, which is a known pathology. So yeah, these are all very standard issues that different kinds of models have. And they've even mentioned some bloopers here. So in this case, occasionally tries to increase its chance of success, so just modifying and launching its own execution script. And it says here, instead of making its code run faster, it simply tried to modify its own code to extend the timeout period. So it kind of cheats a bit sometimes. And I like what they've done here, where they mention the ethical considerations under the future implications. The concern for me as a scientist is that, let's say, real scientists, human scientists want to use this tool, this AI scientist to help them with the research, which I think could have significant benefit if you are trying to 
synthesize the literature in a reasonable amount of time if you want to come up with some sort of novel idea and even writing the code right i mean the code i think from my opinion is it's one of the clear benefits that i typically get when uh, using machine learning models or ai models large language models uh, because it helps write code in a, in a much more efficient time even if it doesn't always get it right at least it gives you sort of like a template that you can modify in a reasonable reasonable amount of time they say here that we don't believe that the role of a human scientist will be diminished if anything the role of a scientist will change and adapt to new technology and move up the food chain so i kind of agree with that but i also i'm worried about the the <laughs> these sort of ethical considerations right in the sense that like you have an automated reviewer, right? Are people just going to become lazier in terms of re reviewing papers? I've already noticed in some reviews of papers that they are pretty lazy and they're not really thorough as much as they really should be. I review papers for journals occasionally and I try my best to be as thorough and as helpful to the authors as possible while providing critiques that I think are valid and can help push the science forward. I do think that this is just a way to make us a bit lazier and maybe less careful. And I'm worried that if we're just more lazy and more careless, you know, it's one thing to be careless in maybe, I don't know, some very esoteric field, maybe theoretical astrophysics or math. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there, not to offend any theoretical astrophysicists or mathematicians. But it's one thing to be maybe catastrophically wrong about some sort of fundamental proof in 65 dimensional space right that's it's one thing to be wrong about that it's another thing entirely to be wrong about something involving like cancer research or something that is going to be applied directly to healthcare or automate some sort of system process that people use on the day-to-day -day. so i think that while these tools are going to be beneficial we we really have to to i think be more cognizant of of how they are applied. And we really need more human feedback, I think. I think the human feedback needs to increase. In a way, we've kind of made our job harder in a way because because these things can generate things at such a rapid pace, it's harder to vet and it's harder to verify, right? And it's like, you kind of need to build another model to verify this model and how does it stop, right? At what point do you need the human to start verifying everything? Okay, so with that, that will conclude this video. I hope you found it entertaining and interesting and thought-provoking. I think that we definitely need to be talking more about artificial intelligence, and I hope that you'll come back to my channel. I'm thinking about making more videos on my thoughts on artificial intelligence and what it implies for the future. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to get updates on those kinds of videos. And I will see you next time.